Hey one, hey all, thanks for dropping by the channel and at this most festive time of the year, I want to give a special thank you for giving me a little bit of your valuable time as we delve into a conversation that has been a year in the making. We're going to ask the question and try to be as objective as we can about it. Was the Transformers Siege line worth it? That's going to be our question to answer in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, man, that's right, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors NL, the Autobot Family, and have a look for me everywhere across social media. And I started this off by asking a very... What on the surface seems like a simple question. Was the Transformer Siege line worth it? Naturally, fans and collectors will immediately jump to the idea, yeah, it was worth it, it was a fantastic line. In fact, many people have called it the greatest line in years. But how much of that is our own subjectivity as collectors, and how much of it is objective truth based on finances, economics, and kind of how the world works? works. Well, we're going to try and balance things out as best as we can here by looking at a number of metrics. And those of you who have been around since the beginning of the year, actually, I guess the tail end of 2018, you know that besides for uh, uh, our paint apps, articulation and transformation, over the last year with the Siege line, I added a new metric, that being guilty or innocent of the recent increase. Now, at the beginning of the year, I actually threw out some percentages, but I hadn't, I hadn't actually done the math, so I've done the math. And I can only speak for the way the market is in Canada. Uh, so I should give a couple of disclaimers before we get into this. If you are someone who is an apologist, like you are a apologist, whatever uh, you know Hasbro or Takara does with Transformers, you justify somehow, some way. This will not be a discussion for you. If you are a loyalist, this will not be a discussion for you. I don't understand why anyone. Life lesson from Gotbot here. I don't know why anybody would ever be a loyalist to any company. None. Not just in this case, but none. You be loyal to your friends, like I try to be loyal to you guys. You be loyal to your family, and you be loyal to your own bank account. That's it. Outside of that, everybody else is trying to get their hand in your pocket, my friend. It's up to you to protect it. If you are um, looking at this like sub purely from a subjective standpoint, like you are such a hardcore fan that you cannot objectively look at this, then this might not be for you, and maybe it will be. I don't know. We'll see. Because it's going to be, I think it's going to be more enlightening. This isn't the gloom and doom thing by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, my outlook is a lot more positive now than I thought it was going to be a year ago. But to throw out a couple of numbers here. We look at Deluxes, and here in Canada, Deluxe went from $19.99 to $29.99. That was a 50% increase. Were Deluxes 50% better this time around? Is that justified? A Voyager went from $29.99 here to $39.99. That, in and of itself, was an increase of 33 and a third percent, which I thought is, I thought that's what Deluxes were. 33 and a third percent. Were Voyagers 33 and a third percent better? And lastly, we have leaders to discuss. A leader class price point went from $59.99 to, depending on where you buy them, $69.99 to $74.99, a 20% increase. Are Voyagers, um, sorry, leaders 20% better than they were? That's what we're asking. Is there actually more value for your money here? The very first thing to note, and the very first argument that people like to say is, it's due to inflation. No, it's not. No, it's not. Some of it is. Inflation, on average, goes up annually by about 3.5%. I just threw out to you 
50%, 33%, and 20%. So no, this is not purely due to inflation. Some people will say it's due to um, American trade issues with China. Perhaps. However, we're going to talk about that a little bit later because there was actually one size class here that got a price increase, while the U.S. did not get a price increase. So I find that very interesting. I think that that absolutely negates your argument about the whole Chinese market affecting things. And the third thing that people like to tout, um, well, plastic is more expensive because of the price of oil. Also incorrect. As a matter of fact, in the last two years, living in a province that is an oil producing province, we have had uh, less income for the province because the price of oil on the world market has been down in the last two years. So no, those costs are not actually more, objectively speaking. So right now, before we kind of jump into things, the takeaway at this point is this. Yes, some increase was bound to happen. Some increase is indeed justified. But was all of it justified? Well, perhaps the best place for us to begin is with those size classes and those things that really aren't being compared to anything else. And so we begin with the smallest of the line, that being the Siege Battlemasters. And the Battlemasters are made up of axes and swords and hammers and blasters, but what we didn't see through it all were a lot of molds. In fact, we only had five in all, and one of those is conspicuous by his absence here, that being the mold used for Fire Drive and Fracas. But I kind of let this slide because it gave us target masters, which we were sorely lacking, including a couple of new characters, such as Smashdown over there, who I love. And it did so at a very small, minuscule price point. So I let it pass for what it is. That being said, I think it's time for us to retire the battle master molds that we've had and break out a couple of new ones. Now, just as the battle masters took up the price point of prime masters and before them titan masters and did it at the same price point and did it better, these guys, the micro master two packs, really took up the price point of what was traditionally a legends class offering. But this time around, we kind of get double your pleasure, double your fun. Perhaps long gone are the days of getting four and six packs when it comes to MicroMasters, but for the price point of what was previously a Legends class figure, I think that these are largely justified. And we ended up with, granted, several mold reuses, but more new molds than I originally anticipated. Case in point, right here in this smattering of MicroMasters, we have about 11 or 12 unique molds, a couple of reuses. And this is not all of the MicroMasters. There were more than this. Now, why do I say that I think the price is justified if they're taking over a previous price point? Simple. I say it because we have tooling in each of these packs and kind of planning and engineering in each of these packs for two characters. We have more paint apps than we typically got on Legends class before. And generally, the mass of plastic used falls in line with about what we would get for a previous Legends class offering. For example, let's just take direct hit and power punch here. They clock in at about 28 grams. Conversely, something like I don't know, uh, Titan's Return Brawn clocks in at about 35 grams. So yes, a little bit less here, but you do get two characters with more paint. Lastly, I want to kind of address the Commander Clash Jetfire. Yes, this guy was deemed innocent in his review, and yes, I stand by it. I think he's absolutely worth the price of admission. To be fair though, I got mine on a deep discount. My understanding is that within the United States, this guy retailed for $79.99. In Canada, he was $119.99. I got mine for $76.99 Canadian. So he was definitely worth it to me. Was he worth the $119? Or if you live in the US, was he worth the $79? Probably. But it does bring up a possible disturbing trend. Case in point, 
Uh, let's just use these three older lads to kind of discuss a point that I've mentioned a couple of times in the live show. I fear that we are reaching a point where there's sort of a reset of the entire idea behind size classes and we're going to all of a sudden see certain size classes uh, get downsized, cost cutting measures taken in order to kind of keep things going but in the end we're probably going to get less as consumers. So here we have in the middle Voyager class Vector Prime from a long time ago admittedly. It is a mold from 2006 if I'm not mistaken that was released in this case in 2008, decade ago and it obviously was significantly cheaper than what you would spend on a Voyager today but he was a Voyager. Now you look at him compared to the Siege Voyager Optimus and the Power of the Primes Leader Class Optimus and he is closer to Leader Class Optimus. A little bit shorter but guess what? Leader Class Optimus and Voyager Vector Prime are about the same mass. About 330 grams. Siege Optimus, significantly more expensive, is only 146 grams. So you are legitimately getting less plastic now. You're getting less for your money now. The argument could be made, hey, there's more engineering and paint that went into Optimus for the Siege line. Arguably, that could definitely be true. As for the paint, I don't know. I took some of it off, but I get where you're coming from. There's definitely a little bit of a higher parts count, I think. There's certainly improved articulation, such as thigh swivels, such as bicep swivels. So I get that, and there would be a certain increase in price that is justifiable based on a decade of time passing, as well as changes to engineering. But the actual plastic content has significantly dropped. Do I think that Siege Optimus is innocent? Absolutely, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it comes with the caveat that that innocent verdict is really colored by the fact that this is an Optimus that's filling the wishes of many, many fans. So there's a high subjective quality to it. Okay, so when we talk about the Battle Masters and the Micro Masters and the Commander class size, admittedly, we can't really compare them to anything else because they're technically brand new and as such, for the most part, they're pretty much justified. I can easily, easily justify the Battle Masters and the Micro Masters because the prices really didn't go up when it came to things like Titan Masters and Legend class figures. So, like, they're sort of comparable, kind of. It would have been nice to kind of get some more Micro Master molds, but we had a fair amount for what they were. I would have liked to have had a few more unique Battle Master molds though, for sure. There weren't quite enough of them, but they're at such a low price point that I kind of give them a pass. When it comes to Jetfire, I love it. Now, I, I, like I said, I thought it was innocent, but I got him severely on sale. Would he be worth the full price? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's fantastic and blew me away, but I don't know if it would blow me away 120 bucks enough. And, of course, we just saw there something that I've talked about many times on the live show about how size classes are changing, and I would say all of us as collectors need to do our due diligence and pay attention to that to make sure that we are not getting less and less all the time. Now, before we jump into um, our three comparable, well, kind of four comparable class sizes, I did want to mention one thing that would definitely add to the uh, price increase, and that would be these things, these, these boxes. These are... Like, they're nice, they are, they're nice boxes, but they're not really stackable. Like, they are stackable, but like, that's not clean. Now, some people have argued and said, hey, what you're supposed to do with these boxes is stack them in this manner. Um, maybe. Uh, look, years ago, you used to get Transformers in boxes, and then as a cost-cutting measure, boxes became blister cards. And now we're back to boxes. Why would we go back to the thing that obviously adds price that's unnecessary? The blister packs are just fine. As a matter of fact, if there's an even more minimalist way to do that, do it. 
I don't think that the packaging is justified or necessary. I think that this is a probably a, a, a few percent worth of price increase that really really wasn't needed. Now, those who are mint in sealed box collectors are going to argue and say it was absolutely needed. But for the majority of people who do like to display their uh, collections on their shelves out of package, I don't think that this is justified because I don't know if it applies to a large enough segment of the collector community. So that being said, let's jump into our comparative size classes to see what was and was not innocent and guilty. And now we get into the heart of the matter. When we look at the deluxes, the deluxes for the Siege line went up 50% in their price. Was that justified or not? Well, it's a mixed bag, actually. For example, a character like Spinister has a significantly higher parts count and significantly more intricate uh, engineering that went into him. As such, he would be innocent. Conversely, as terrific as the Siege Mirage is, he is noted as having tabs that break, though they have it on mine, and he does come in at a much lower mass than what traditional deluxes have been. Take, for example, someone here like Ironhide. His classics version clocked in somewhere at around 113 grams. The Combiner Wars version somewhere around 90 grams. And this guy at about 105 grams. So he would definitely be innocent because compared to the most recent iteration of this character, we're actually getting more for our purchasing power. However, Someone like Refractor, or Reflector if you will, is a little bit more of a mixed bag. Each one of these guys only clocks in at 72 grams. Even as recent as the Prime Wars trilogy, the going mass for a deluxe was around 85, 86 grams. So these are significantly less for more. And you know what? I don't feel like the engineering is particularly extra special on these guys. Maybe the extra ankle tilt. That being said though, we have someone like Hotshot, and Hotshot is the sort of guy that's pretty much on par, pretty much on par, with the mass that you would expect for a deluxe, and he has significantly more paint apps. Therefore, he would be innocent, but sometimes it's not so clear. For example, Old Sky Tread, or Flywheels if you will, he eked out an innocent verdict, but barely. In fact, Slamdance here couldn't even eke out an innocent. Why? Because Slamdance is noted as having significantly more QC issues, and if you're paying more, you should not have more QC issues. But perhaps the greatest offender and the most guilty would have to be the fairly poorly done Chromia, and Nightbird for that matter. The improvements that they made to this mold aren't improvements. They hinder the articulation. Though there's nice molded in detail, she struggles to stand up and so does Nightbird. And it only clocks in with everything on her at 64 grams. That's about 20 or 22 grams less for an offering that's already poorly engineered. Okay, so what about Deluxe as the whole? Generally, we had more wins than losses. We had more innocent than guilty. And when it comes to innocent, we had certain things that you could measure. We had increased amount of paint applications. We had actually more mass most of the time. Even when we had a reuse done, such as the case with Ironhide and Ratchet. Ratchet had a ton of new and specific remolding. Granted, a couple were done a little lazy. Hotshot there is just a reuse of Hound, a little bit lazy, but they did paint him as accurately as possible. And even with the recent crosshairs, again, a little bit of a lazy use of Ironhide, but I, it's painted nicely. Nothing there I really need to fix. There's a lot of little details. Same with the power dashers. They are reuses of the weaponizers, but they're painted well. When it comes to the guilty ones, the, really the only reasons they're guilty is because the engineering is more simplistic, the mass is much lower, and in the case of Chromia, the engineering is just trash. Now, the argument was made that, hey, they were given a mass of plastic and were told this is what you have to use for the entire deluxe 
uh, I, I guess, series. However many you make per wave, however many you decide to make, this is your massive plastic you can use, allocate it, but you're not getting any more. That's why some are bigger and some are smaller, and that might indeed be true. But the fact that we have any that are smaller for a 50% higher price point is troubling, especially when coming up in Earthrise, we see smaller yet again. Smaller in the form of Cliff Jumper. And granted, for now, he comes with a ton of accessories, but what happens when those accessories begin to vanish and fade away, and we look and say, hey, this is a Legends class. Instead of paying $12.99, now you're paying $29.99. Goes right back to that issue, that concern that I said we need to pay attention to when it comes to uh, the, the changing of size classes, like we had with Leader Optimus, Vector Prime, and, and Voyager Siege Prime. Food for thought. On the whole, though, the deluxes are innocent because we do have more innocent than we do guilty. What about Voyager? When it comes to Voyager, things are far easier to discern. Whether it was Springer, Optimus, or even the uh, repaint of him into Nemesis Prime that I think the car is doing, any version of the Megatron mold, Soundwave or Sound Blaster or Logos Prime if you like, the Seeker mold. Honestly, all of these had tremendous paint apps, excellent articulation, fantastic conversions, Admittedly, my Optimus did suffer from a QC issue and I did have to exchange him. And some would argue that Springer is overly engineered, meaning he's a little more complicated than he needs to be. And though some would look at the Seekers and say, hey, repaints up the yin yang, even though those repaints do make sense. All of these guys are innocent because of either paint or because of engineering or just because of articulation or parts count. I can understand it. In fact, we had here one, two, three, four, five new molds. And the only time we had a reuse was with the Seekers, which makes sense for the Rainmakers and for Skywarp and Thundercracker and Red Wing if you want him. And the only reuse we had of sound wave was a sound blaster like a reuse was only done if it made sense like Springer was not reused because it would it's so iconic it would make sense for nobody else in fact we only had one guilty in the Voyager size class only one and it's because the engineering is just awful poor lonely ape face I was actually a lot kinder to ape face than a lot of people were I don't mind the white plastic that was used, and I think the paint depths are pretty good. But the engineering is not good, especially the way that that gorilla head attaches. If that hinge sticking off, that one hinge had been handled better, perhaps this guy would have been a different story. So on the whole, what about the Voyager size class? Was it guilty or innocent? I would say, overall, the Voyager size class was innocent, and that brings us to leader. And indeed, this size class, being a leader size, is kind of a story of ironies for me. The only two that are justified here would be the Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. Why? Because they both have significantly high parts count and kind of the engineering to go along with it, but they also have the necessary requisite mass. Yes, they are shorter than traditional leader class figures, but they are also far more dense and have the mass. You will notice neither of them are here because neither of them are in my personal collection, though I did thankfully get to look at both of them here on the channel. I happen to have the two that I deemed guilty, Astro Train and Shockwave. Neither of these are leader class offerings. Both of them are tremendous for being Voyager class. However, that kind of comes with a little bit of a caveat too because the parts count here and the engineering is higher. Here's the thing, and I sort of said it recently when I looked at Astro Train. It's not leader class. That's overpriced. But it's not as low as Voyager either. These guys, engineering wise and aesthetically, are largely perfect, but they fall really within both. If in the United States, for example, a Voyager class runs for $30 and a leader class currently runs for $50, I would say both of these guys 
respectively run reasonably at about $40. So if you can get them on sale, then I'd say nab them. But they're not quite worth the full price of admission, even though I got them. So don't, what does that tell you? So what a surprising run we've had. We've had a number of size classes that are automatically deemed innocent. Then we came to those deluxes, Voyagers, and the Leaders. And I would venture to say that the most controversial size class would be the Leader size class. We had a lot more wins than we had losses for the Deluxes, but the fact that we have any losses is still a little bit troubling. The Voyagers were also extremely strong with great engineering, some neat tricks like the calves of the Seekers. Yeah, I know, the Seeker mold is overused. It's always overused, but it's such a good version of those characters that it might be like the sort of thing that I don't know if they can ever improve on it. I really, really don't. And that's taking into account the fact that Earthrise has a, a Starscream coming that I don't think is as good. Though I think that mold will be fantastic for Coneheads, just saying. That brings us to the last two size classes. One of those is Titan Class. Now, I don't have Titan Class Omega Supreme here, unfortunately. He was on loan to me. But I did manage to take a look at him. He was innocent because guess what? Though he didn't have stickers or lights and sound, he is hefty. He is one of the heavier ones. All of the joints and ratchets work like butter. The conversion is quite good, though I wish the track attached a little bit better than it does. The ankle tilts, the range of motion and articulation, a lot of it is very true to Omega Supreme. He was innocent, and he was one of the best uh, offerings of the year. And I think that was an important one to be innocent, even though here in Canada, he went up in price. He didn't in the United States, and that's why he was innocent. If we had to go just on the Canadian price, then he would be guilty because there was no reason for that to go up. You cannot cite the Chinese market issues because guess what? Canada does not have those issues with China. The United States does, so that was no impact. You can't cite the cost of oil. Oil is lower. It was just because they wanted to up the price. $249 is a hefty price. I'm glad that I'm only in for one more Titan because I don't know how high they're going to push that envelope and keep pushing that envelope. I guess until people stop buying. Which brings us to the last size class. Whatever that idiotic, preposterous Unicron size class is. And yes, he has to go included because he is Siege. Not Masterpiece. He is Siege. Uh, absolutely guilty. I've never seen any commercially available product ever that's as guilty as that Unicron. No, it is not worth a thousand dollars Canadian. Nope. Nope. There's zero justification in any way, shape, or form. I've talked about it often, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. He is the most guilty consumer good I've ever seen. And you could say, hey, but a lot of this is, has been justified because of things going up. Things always go up. Well, let's look at the video game industry. When a new console comes out, it still tends to run for about $500, just as it did 20 and 25 years ago. So, no, it hasn't really gone up. The cost of games. In general, here in Canada, the cost of games are usually hmm, somewhere around $80, $90 when they're new. Guess what? When I was 10, I bought a wrestling game for my Sega Genesis and out brand new, it cost $90. I'm 41, so no, do not say to me that those industry, that, you know, consumer industries go up that much. They don't. They go up incrementally, not 50% in one fell swoop. A lot of this boiled down to, I think, corporate greed. We've justified it, but how long can we keep justifying it for? Subjectively, man, I'm there with you guys who say, hey, this was a fantastic line. I agree, even though I had some QC issues. But objectively, I think we have to go and defer to our Quintesson judges. So I ask you, dear Quintesson judges, was the siege line, this is one last time that we need them, was the siege line, as a whole, guilty or innocent? And so, at the end of the day, we are left kind of with the same question that we started with. Going from Battle Masters to Micro Masters to Deluxe to Voyager to Leader to Commander Class to Titan Class to 
whatever that Unicron monstrosity is going to be, I don't even, insane class, I don't know. Was Siege worth it? Well, subjectively, absolutely, we got so many ideal representations of characters we have long, long wanted. In fact, even the Quintesson judges agreed that yes, as a whole, the Siege line was innocent. So if the Quintesson judges say that it is innocent for the line, then their vote is objective because they're looking solely at the facts of engineering, of paint applications, of plastic content. It was an innocent line. However, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from Siege that we would be wise as consumers to take to heart. There are instances where we are allowing ourselves to be kind of taken advantage of and we are objectively getting less for our purchasing power. If you're cool with that, then great. But if you're not cool with that, perhaps your buying habits should become a little more discerning. I know mine certainly will. I expected at the beginning of the year that this was going to be guilty. I expected to get to the end of the year and say, no, it was fine, but it's guilty. Now, I'm also not on the bandwagon thinking, hey, everything was perfect. Oh, these are so much better than what we got before. They're not. They're fine. They're good. But I also had a number of QC issues to deal with, more than I've had in any other line. I'm happy with this line, but I think we have to do our due diligence and pay attention going forward. Hopefully Earthrise will be just as good. Luckily, everything I've heard says that there will not be another price increase there. Of course, I look at something like Cliff Jumper and I think about how small he is. I look at something like Hoist and just how hollow the backs of his legs are and his thighs are, and I wonder if it's an auger of things to come. I'm trying to look out for you, I'm trying to look out for us all here in this collecting community, community, and hopefully I'm giving you some food for thought. I'd love to know if you think that my uh, kind of assessment is correct, spot on, did I forget something, did I overlook something, what do you think? Not speaking subjectively, because I think subjectively we're all going to say, hey, it was a fantastic line as fans. Objectively, standing back, taking a look at things objectively, do you think that this siege line was worth it? Both I and the Quintesson judges say yes, but perhaps barely. And so with all that said, thanks for dropping by giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I know how important it is to you. I hope that you are enjoying the holidays with your friends and family. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link down in the description. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us. Don't forget that somehow, someway, each and every day, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together, either in the live streams, at the stop motion premieres, or, as always, man, right here, have another visit inside the videos.